you take advantage of these people and deliberately target seniors in this? Well, why would you charge him $825 after quoting him $150? Well, if he, that's not what he was quoted. He was quoted that over the no, phone. No, he was not. I think people should feel ripped off? We have no further comment than what I gave previously. Okay, is $800 a legitimate charge for that? And take a look at this. One graduation turns into a perfect case of what not to do during a potential tornado, and all of that is caught on tape. And some drivers might have thought they hit the jackpot the other day as money started flying on Interstate 97. But one local man wishes he could get it all back. His plea for your good heart. It's an issue we uncovered that's so alarming. Diane Sawyer even put it on World News Tonight. Yes, and ABC 2 News investigator Josie Thurman's here now with an investigation you need to know and see before you put your kids on the bus in the morning. Video, just Absolutely, awful. because you put your kids on the bus in the morning and you tell them to behave, but it seems it may be the drivers who need the scolding in this case. Now, we found hundreds of them busted for bad behavior by those speed and red light cameras, and we know there are hundreds more. Let me look up mustache face. Hug and kiss. Love you. They may be the most precious cargo on the road. Little ones backpacked and bright eyed, ready to face another school day after a ride on the bus. I keep my fingers crossed that they all stay in their seats. You worry your kids will be on their best behavior, but what about the drivers? I trust that my bus driver is following all the, the laws. Our bus driver is like really good, so I've never seen a speed. But we have catching bus drivers breaking all the rules once they pulled away from the stop. Speed and red light cameras captured them in action, blowing through red lights, speeding nearly 40 miles per hour over the limit, even getting busted in a school zone, all while carrying your kids. You've got, on, potentially on our bus, 50 lives that you've just put in danger. Danger that's real and recognized with a citation. ABC 2 News investigators found hundreds of them issued to local bus drivers between January 2010 and June. In that time, 99 red light or speed camera violations were given to public school drivers in Baltimore County. 74 tickets also handed to Baltimore City drivers. But that's only half the story because together Baltimore City and Baltimore County also pay more than 300 contracted drivers to transport their students. There's no way for us to know how many of them have gotten tickets. But we're not the only ones in the dark. How would you be notified if there was a problem operator with a contracted driver that gets these red light tickets or speed camera tickets? We, we would not be notified. That. That's because in Baltimore County and Baltimore City, ABC2 News investigators have learned contractors aren't required to tell the districts when their drivers get these kinds of citations. It's simply not in their contracts. It's a benefit to us that you've notified us about this, and we're going to certainly use it to our benefit as well as the citizens of Baltimore to make sure that everyone is safe and everyone is held accountable. Accountability that differs depending on who you work for. School system drivers get progressive discipline. In Baltimore County, that means a letter in their file with the first citation and potential suspension if the violations continue. And for some, they do. ABC 2 News investigators spotted 17 repeat offenders in the county records, including one bus which was cited five times in just three months. Transportation manager Jim Mitcherling couldn't talk specifics, but says disciplinary action has been taken in some cases. I would not want to see one ticket from a bus driver or any other employee here in Baltimore County who drives a board-owned vehicle um, or equipment. One is too many. We transport students. Um, and that's just not acceptable. Baltimore City Schools Chief Operating Officer Keith Scroggins has the same no tolerance attitude. Although we know less about the city's citations because they say they don't keep copies. As a result, the district could only supply us with a list of violations and a handful of tickets. We found 15 repeat offenders in the district list, including two buses that racked up six tickets each. Although the district tells us it has no documents to track the number of disciplinary actions taken against its drivers, Scroggins admits there have been suspensions. As for contractors who continue to rack up citations, would they have to notify the school system in that situation? I don't think we can require the contractors to let us know the disciplinary actions that they take, but they will have to let us know when their drivers get uh, red light tickets. Contract drivers will eventually have to report red light and speed tickets in Baltimore City and the county because of changes both districts hope to make to their contracts. 
other districts don't have to make that change. A school bus driver in Anne Arundel County is a school bus driver. Transportation Supervisor that. Chris Carter says all their drivers are held to the same standard. And in a district that claims to have no camera citations, that means contractors have to report any moving violation, just like the drivers who work for the school system. For us to treat them any differently as it relates to what we expect from them, their training, their in-service training, I think we've been doing our students an injustice. And in the end, it's the students moms and dads are worried about when they say those morning goodbyes. Have a good day. I love you. They feel the ride to school should be safe no matter who's driving the bus. The cameras certainly don't care either way. School system drivers have to pay their own tickets. They racked up 10 grand in fines in just the two years we looked at, and the county claims there are none outstanding at the moment. As for the discipline of the drivers, we do know termination is on the table if the school districts think it's necessary, guys. Kelly, mad scientists, pill pushers, and molesters, they all turn up in the discipline records for Maryland doctors. But despite the cases against them, many of those doctors continue to practice for months or years before any action is taken. You trust them with your life, and they take an oath to protect it, swearing to do no harm. But what about the doctors who break that promise? The vast majority of doctors in Maryland don't have any kind of disciplinary problems. Yet among the more than 18,000 practicing Maryland doctors, there are a handful who do. A small minority who've been forced to take off their white coats by the Maryland Board of Physicians after abusing booze and illegal drugs or over-prescribing dangerous addictive pills. Some molested patients and others allegedly played a role in deaths. With findings so serious, you'd expect swift justice. It seems to me that the Board of Physicians, with their resources, should be able to go in and weed the bad apples out. But we've discovered some cases rotting in limbo, taking months, even years, to resolve. Frankly, after, after all that we've been through, I, I felt like it was a lost cause. Brian Hannon waited years for closure after his mother died following plastic surgery. Janet Hannon wanted to look good for her youngest son's wedding, so she had a combination of procedures in 2005. The surgery lasted more than 10 hours and required an overnight stay. Two days after returning home to Perry Hall, she passed away. My sons were robbed of her mother way before her time. Over the years, this family's sadness turned to anger. They discovered Janet's surgeon, Dr. Oscar Ramirez, had no hospital privileges, and his Timonium Clinic wasn't supposed to handle operations lasting longer than six hours or keep patients overnight. They also learned that five months before Janet's death, another Ramirez patient died following a 12-hour surgery. Had appropriate action been taken then, uh, my son would still have their mother. Nothing happened in 2005 or in 2006 after the board was officially notified about Janet's death yes. and potential issues with her surgeon once her family filed a lawsuit. Even then, the board took no action. Five more years passed before the board finally revoked Ramirez's medical license for failing to meet the standards of quality medical care in the case of Janet and the other patient. There's something wrong with the system when People die and it takes five years to, to look at something and then move to action. But the delay in the Ramirez case isn't isolated. ABC2 News investigators examined hundreds of pages of disciplinary records for 49 doctors slapped with serious action since December 2010. Things like suspensions or revocations. In some cases, it took seven years for formal action to be taken. And in more than a third of the cases, the board took at least two years to initially suspend or revoke a doctor's license. The board's chairman tells us, quote, there are cases where the board has legitimately dropped the ball. The board has limited resources. We have to prioritize, and if we find a case that warrants immediate urgent action, uh, then we prioritize that and go forward with it. But while the cases are reviewed, we found doctors are still treating patients, even when the allegations against them are disturbing. Take Dr. Donald Roan. In 2004, a patient told the board he was trading oral sex for medication. Roan's license was suspended six years later and later revoked for sexual misconduct with that woman and a teenage patient. 
look at Dr. Mark Geyer. His first complaint was filed more than four years ago, but it wasn't until last year the board suspended his license for, quote, experimental treatment of autistic children. Geyer referred to those treatments as chemical castration and has since been ordered to cease and desist practicing medicine. That is scary, absolutely. What's even more frightening is that doctors who lose their licenses can, in some cases, pack up and move to another state. They're able, they're legally able to continue to practice until the second state you know, takes action against their, their license. Remember Janet Hannon's doctor, Oscar Ramirez? He's now practicing plastic surgery in Florida, months after his Maryland license was revoked. We sent in our hidden camera to see if he'd be up front about his past. Dr. Ramirez, can we talk to you for a minute? And after our visit, we caught up with Ramirez in the parking lot. Do you feel like you were a risk to the public practicing as a physician, either here or when you were practicing mm -hmm. in Maryland? I uh, practice with the highest standard or care. My uh, surgery center was a state of the art. There was no cost effect between the surgeries that have performed on those patients and the death of those patients. Ramirez is appealing his Maryland revocation and is fighting Florida's Board of Medicine as well, which made a move to potentially pull his license four months after Maryland's decision. It's another delay. A lag in disciplining, particularly over serious, what appear to be serious offenses, means jeopardy to the health of patients who are going to that doctor. I don't think you can roll the dice with with people's lives. By taking so much time, Hannon thinks the board is gambling with your life. He's fighting in his mother's honor, hoping to make the odds better for you. And every time I say, enough's enough, I can't take it anymore, I look at her picture or I look at her plaque, you know, from her award, and I say, I can't quit. I can't. We started contacting the Board of Physicians about our findings December 28th. After putting us off for weeks, the chairman was finally made available for that on-camera interview you saw yesterday.